Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So today I want to show off real quick this feature that's called Amber Ports. And it's basically this external app that's available on Arc OS on the RG351P that allows you to install and download specific ports that are not available on Arc OS itself. There's this developer out there, his name's Kreal, and he's like super prolific. And he's basically made so many ports at this point that nobody else can keep up. So what he did is he made an app that allows you to just pick and choose which ones you want to install in your system. And in addition to other ports and games like that, there are other features like Moonlight that he's already gotten working on the RG351P. So it's a really exciting thing to do, and it's kind of cutting edge, and it has a few bugs here and there, but I thought you'd be really interested in at least learning a little bit more about it and the potential that it brings to your RG351 device. So without any further delay, let's jump into it. So installing Amber Ports couldn't be easier. All you have to do is go to the GitHub page and there's this big download zip button. And while you're there, you can go ahead and give some support to the developer, maybe buy him a coffee. But after that, all you have to do is click on this download zip button and then go ahead and unzip the zip file that you download. And at that point, all you have to do is drag it onto your SD card. So put your ArcOS SD card into your computer, open up the easy ROMs partition, go into ports, and then just drag these two files into the ports folder. And that's it, you've installed it at this point. All you have to do is eject your SD card and put it back into your device. Okay, so back on my device running Arc OS here, I'm just gonna go up to the ports section. From there, all you have to do is select Amber Ports. Now you can see there's an entire menu here. The first thing I like to do anytime I open up Amber Ports is to select the update button. And this will download the latest update and then it'll close out of Amber Ports for you. At that point, all you have to do is just go back up to that ports folder and then select Amber Ports again. Okay, so now we're really in it. So let me show you off some of the things that are available. So under the games header, you can see all of these different games that have already been ported over. And these are standalone ports. These are not running RetroArch cores or anything else like that. So they have the standalone Quake 1, 2, and 3, Duke Nukem, Cannonball, Flashback, Cave Story. There's all sorts of games here, including Diablo 1 and Diablo 2. Now, I personally haven't tested Diablo 2 yet. I've heard it's a little bit buggy, but if you're really into Diablo 2 and you really want to try it out, this is your only option right now. And it seems like new games are added every few days, so make sure that once you've installed this, update the Amber ports and then check and see if there's more games available. It's pretty amazing how many are available already. If you go into the multimedia section, you can see that Kodi is available. If you want to use the Kodi media player, you can do that on your device now. But to me, one of the most exciting features is this new streaming section. In here they have Moonlight, which will allow you to stream from your computer onto this device. Same thing with NVIDIA GeForce Now, and then the Google Stadia, and then Amazon Luna too. So you have four different ways that you can stream content from your computer onto your device. So say you're ready to install one of these ports. All you do is you go up to the section, you pick whatever you want to install, like Half-Life, and then you just press the A button. It'll download all of the execution files that you need from the GitHub page, and then it'll install it onto your SD card. At that point, the system will actually tell you what retail files you need to add to your computer to allow them to work. And if you're wondering how to run Half-Life, I have a video on this already, but this is just a new way of installing it onto your device. So now say we go back into that ports folder and we check, and there you go, you can see Half-Life is there. And earlier this week, I did the exact same process for Quake 3. All I had to do was install those files, and then I went and I got my retail version of Quake 3, and I drag and drop the specific files I needed onto the folder itself. Now, like I mentioned, there are some bugs with this. So for example, with Quake 3, up is down and down is up in the menus only. So yeah, it's a little bit weird to kind of navigate through by pushing up for down and down for up. But when you're actually playing the game, it has none of those issues or anything like that. It runs just fine. So you can see here the Quake 3 Arena is running at a smooth 60 frames per second. It's really impressive on this little screen. Now I'm not sure if multiplayer is set up for this game yet. All I did was just play against a few bots and stuff, but honestly it was still kind of fun. This is a game I had a lot of fun playing in the late 90s and early 2000s. Now 
Now, I plan on doing a video guide at some point about Moonlight Streaming. This is something I'm still learning about myself, so I'm not quite ready to give a guide on it, but I did at least get it working on my own computer. And I actually don't have an NVIDIA GPU, which is required to run Moonlight, so I had to use a different app to do a workaround. So yeah, it's, it's kind of complicated, but let me just show you how it works. So you can see here, I tapped into my desktop and then I ran Steam, and here I am jumping into Portal 2. Now the cool thing is, is I didn't do any button mapping or anything else like that. It's all working just fine, and I didn't have to do any sort of extra work. I have the resolution for this set at 480p, so that way it's just a little bit easier to stream everything, so it's a little bit smoother, but you could crank it all the way up to 1080p if you had a really fast connection in your house. I recognize the irony of trying to play a computer game on a handheld device like this, but at the same time, it's still pretty cool, you know, to be able to play Portal 2 without having to actually be at your desk is kind of cool. Now another cool trick I figured out is just running Google Stadia through your Chrome browser right there on your computer and then streaming that over to your device. Now unfortunately I live in Hawaii which is actually not officially supported by Google Stadia, but if you live somewhere that has a good Stadia connection, this is going to be a viable option for you. It's really kind of fun. As you can see here I'm trying to load it, but again this is on like a Saturday night when everybody else is on the internet, and so I wasn't actually able to connect, but it wasn't the fault of the RG351P, it was the fault of the Google Stadia servers. So yeah, that's really it for this video. I just wanted to show off this cool new feature in AMP reports and some of the potential that it has for your RG351 device. If you're looking to push the limits of your device, this is where you want to be. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming!